Missouri coach Eli Drinkwitz says the Tigers are nowhere near ready to play the Kentucky Wildcats this Saturday. Is that gamesmanship, or is he really telling us the truth there? Well, you'll get my take up next, right here on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball five days a week here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy to see all you old faces and hopefully some new faces as well, possibly joining me on YouTube if you'd like to see what's happening behind the scenes. Check it out on YouTube. Just search for Locked on Mizzou. It's as simple as that. But of course, today, got to take our deep dive into the Kentucky Wildcats. I watched all the significant snaps of their game this past week against Louisiana Monroe. And well, that's a much different looking Wildcats offense than what we saw in 2020 last season. I think Both teams are going to be quite a bit strategically different in a lot of ways versus last year. want to get into all that, but just a quick injury update on Mookie Cooper. While he did, he was involved in a significant portion of the snaps he took last week against Central Michigan. He only played about a dozen snaps, maybe as many as 15 or so. Sorry, I don't have that number right in front of me. He touched the ball on a few of them, mostly on jet sweeps. But not a lot of action there, not a lot of production. Maybe some of that a little bit worried about what he's now calling, admitting, I should say, is a foot injury. I had previously assumed that maybe it was an ankle injury, certainly not soft tissue, but honestly, long term, I'm much more concerned about any type of foot injury, no matter what it is, versus an ankle. An ankle's more predictable. Foot injuries... If you don't just give them time to heal, who knows? So hopefully Mookie Cooper keeps getting better as the season goes on here. But you know what? By the way, some interesting notes here on on Kentucky and Louisiana Monroe. First of all, Louisiana Monroe, did you know that Terry Bowden is their coach and Rich Rodriguez is their offensive coordinator? Well, part of that reason might be Rhett Rodriguez, the quarterback starting for Louisiana Monroe Rich Rod's son, would you want your dad to be your offensive coordinator? Dad, I love you, but I'm not so sure I need you yelling in my headset all game. I got to be honest. But another fantastic name I just have to point out here, Boogie Knight, who is without question a 22-year-old piece of gold for Louisiana Monroe. But you know what? Let's get to the game. And to me, the biggest key in this football game, Eli Drinkwitz has talked a lot about how if Missouri is going to win big in the SEC, well, they're going to have to win at the line of scrimmage. No truer game could that be more true than for this Saturday against Kentucky. Because really, number one, you look at that Kentucky offense this Saturday, it's a completely different looking group. Number one, they've got Will Levis, a transfer from Penn State at quarterback. Well, obviously the last couple seasons, as I've discussed here before, there was a lot of just direct snaps, wildcats, and shotgun-based running from Kentucky the past few seasons. Well, against Louisiana Monroe, you actually saw what looked like a bit like an Eli Drinkwitz offense. What it really is is the Sean McVay-style offense. Liam Cohen, 35-year-old cat, signs with the Wildcats to be their offensive coordinator from the Los Angeles Rams. He was on their staff with Sean McVay. And you see that Kentucky is going to be under center a lot more. They're going to be huddling on virtually every possession, just a much more NFL-style offense. And a lot of stuff that Eli Drinkwitz likes to use as well. 
play action passes, some jet motion. Re- again, not unlike what Eli w- likes to do whatsoever. But by the way, just in terms of, of the huddle, I thought Matt Stinchcomb on the broadcast brought up an interesting point. He says, you know what? When you run hurry up, actually you give the defense a longer look at your formation. And while that's certainly an interesting point, at the same time, the offense gets a longer look to see how the defense lines up too. So obviously football, such a cat and mouse game, such a give and take. Certainly Missouri does a lot of no huddle, but it works for them. We all think Eli's a smart guy and everything. Well, Andy Reid tends to huddle on virtually every snap. So it's just personal preference. What do you like to do? And for me, I think there are times to huddle, times to go no huddle, mix it up, use all of those possible situations to your advantage. But to me, one of the biggest questions, once again, it's up front. How does Missouri do getting pressure on Kentucky? Because Liam Cohen got most of his yards in that football game on play action passes deep down the field to Wandale Robinson, the transfer receiver from Nebraska, and also Josh Ali, who we're familiar with, if you remember him from last season. I got to say, but once you actually get Levis under pressure, well, like almost any quarterback, like Connor Basilak, frankly, too, and 99% of other quarterbacks who have ever lived, you get pressure on them, they're a lot less efficient. Well, In week one, Missouri actually generated the most pressures in college football with 45. And for some context, Auburn was second, just two behind Missouri with 43. But but at three, it was all the way down to 35. So Missouri actually had 10 more pressures than the third best team in college football in week one. The question is, will they be able to do that against Kentucky and their the seemingly stalwart and veteran offensive line. Well, I have some more thoughts about that. But first, I want to tell you about our our title sponsor, and that is rockauto.com. And frankly, why would you waste money? If you're you're a do-it-yourselfer, why would you waste money on auto parts? Going to the dealership, maybe you buy stuff from them, the auto chain store, whatever it might be, whatever your move is, I got a better move. It's called rockauto.com. No reason to spend 30%, 50% more for the exact same parts. And why waste time either? This is what the web is great for, and this is where rockauto.com comes in. Makes it easy to find exactly what you're looking for. Your make, your model. Again, find your interior carpet, your motor oil, whatever you might need. But when you go to rockauto.com, just make sure you write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably, low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com So clearly if Missouri gets pressure using only its front four, well, that's ideal, right? To, To state the obvious. And frankly, Kentucky, at least against a bad opponent like Louisiana Monroe, it sure looked like they were able to get pressure using just their front four. Especially there were three different occasions where Louisiana Monroe had a third and long situation. They went with empty formation. And the Wildcats, well, they got after the quarterback in a big way on all three situations. Now certainly Missouri's offensive line should be better than the Warhawks, but my goodness, that was that was frightening. You was you were hoping that with what With Jamin Davis off to the NFL, maybe the pass rush isn't quite what it was last year. Looked pretty good, again, at least against a subpar opponent. But if you're Missouri, you proved last week that you can generate pressure with your linebackers, with your occasional corner blitz safety, that kind of thing. The only question is, if it doesn't get home, do you have enough on the back end? Because, again, Wandale Moore... Transfer from Nebraska, formerly from the state of Kentucky. Looks like a keeper for sure. He's an explosive player. But at the same time, 
There was a little bit of sloppiness, not only for Moore, especially in the punt return game where he muffed one punt, had a really questionable decision to field a bounced ball in traffic. That coupled with some procedural errors by Kentucky, a snap over Levis's head, makes me think that going into this game, Missouri might have an advantage in terms of being the better prepared more clean offensive team because while certainly this scheme I think will be be more efficient for Kentucky I think it could lead to maybe some more turnovers than they've had in the past maybe some more penalties especially on the procedural side than they've had in the past simply because everything once again is just so new for Kentucky but again you look at this Will, Le- Will Levis, let's talk about him a little more. The transfer from Penn State. The kid was mostly, he only made two starts for the Nittany Lions. And in that offense, he was mostly used like the Tigers used James Franklin as a true freshman back in the day. If you can remember that far back to 2010. You whippersnappers, maybe not. So let me remind you, James Franklin was basically used as not only the backup quarterback, but he would be brought in in special situations to run a wildcat play, mostly in short yardage and goal line red zone type situations. Well, this is much how Penn State used Will Levis. But of course, in the Louisiana Monroe game, if you watched along with me, they almost never used Levis as a runner. One time he scrambled outside of the pocket for a seven or eight yard gain, But there were no design runs from Levis there. I think obviously part of that was to not show Missouri or anybody else anything in that, any wrinkles to that run game that they haven't shown before. But I think also Levis wants to prove that he can throw. There's no doubt about that. That's the reason he came to Kentucky. He wanted to be in a pro style offense. He wanted to throw the football. Well, I think he did a pretty good job, obviously, in week one. The numbers popped, but again, if Missouri can just get a little pressure, especially on the backside on some of those play-action passes, maybe early in the football game, I think we can get him out of his comfort zone. Because again, like 99% of quarterbacks, you get them a little bit uncomfortable in the pocket, suddenly they're much less effective. Now the problem is, Kentucky has a really good run game, too. Chris Rodriguez, an excellent back. And by the way, one thing I noticed in the past, the recent past, Kentucky almost never threw to those running backs. Chris Rodriguez was a pure runner. Well, he got three or four shots in the passing game, one time notably in the red zone, a play that looked effective to me. So Missouri cannot really take last year's scouting report and put a lot into it. Just take everything you saw last year with a grain of salt because this is a completely different offense. You're probably better off really just watching Missouri's own scout team running Missouri's offense because that's closer to what you'll see this coming Saturday than what you saw from the Wildcats at Faro this last season. And once again... If you're heading down to Lexington, well, it's looking like a hot, hot forecast, at least two days out. Now, it is going to be a night game, but still, if I were you, I'd get some sweat block just to make sure that you're representing Missouri fans the right way and looking very, very sharp. We don't want to pit anything out, right? So here's what you got to do. You got to go to sweatblock.com, check out their doctor-created doctor recommended wipes that work for up to seven days per use. So that is, that's what I call a dry weekend right there, but they have a dry shirt guarantee. So if sweat block happens to not keep you dry for whatever reason, well, you're, you'll get your money back. That's the kind of confidence they have in their product and you'll have confidence in whatever you wear when you apply their products. So once again, get it for 20% off today at sweatblock.com with the promo code locked on. Oh, by the way, you can get it at Amazon or CVS as well. And speaking of sponsors, of course, we got to talk some betonline.ag where as always, they're your number one spot for everything pro and college football wagering, including the online 
Line's biggest half million dollar NFL mega contest, Planet Earth's $200,000 NFL Survivor Contest, open now at Bet Online. I can't wait to lose that in week one. I'm the master of losing a Survivor Contest way, way, way too early. But if you are smarter than me, just go to Bet Online. Buy in and hey, welcome bonus, 100% welcome bonus on top of whatever you get when you use the promo code locked on. Again, that's promo code locked on for your 100% welcome bonus at Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Now, while the Kentucky offense is going to look completely different from last season, Well, defensively, they're going to look almost exactly the same, at least based on what I saw against the Warhawks. And why not, right? The Kentucky defense was really, really effective last year. So here's what you're going to see. You're going to see a front four that is basically going to bring all the pressure in the passing game. Their linebackers tend to stay at home. Not a lot of blitzing, and well, that's because they don't have to. Again, last season they did a nice job with that front four. Missouri kind of kept that front four out of the game, though, by running the football over and over and over again. A lot of outside zone scheme with Larry Roundtree. They did it effectively, and they did it, well, again, to slow down that Kentucky Kentucky pass rush and just control the ball, obviously. So again, the occasional corner blitz maybe from the slot or the outside from Kentucky, but other than that, Expect to see a lot of zone defense, a lot of two high safeties, unlike Missouri last week and most of last season, they ran single high safety. Well, you're going to see two safeties fairly deep for Kentucky, I think, on most downs, even on first and 10. And if you see those numbers, if you're Connor Basilak, if you're Eli Drinkwitz, you're going to be tempted to run, run the football a lot into that. But I think... If Missouri runs the ball effectively, obviously they should continue to do so. But I think in a way that almost tricks offenses into running the ball when they want you to. So they get one stop, suddenly it's second and eight, suddenly now it's third and ten, and now Kentucky has you exactly where they want you. Another thing about those zone plays, I am curious to see what Missouri does in terms of of running scheme this week because last season they ran a ton of outside zone, especially to the to the right side of that Missouri offensive line, running behind Larry Borum and often Daniel Parker Jr. as well. They really found something there last season. Now maybe Tyler Beatty, perhaps he's even more effective in the outside zone scheme than Larry Roundtree. I could see that. Maybe Missouri just likes that that scheme or. Perhaps this is another cat and mouse give and take moment where Eli not trying to show anything to Kentucky. Perhaps Missouri runs more quick hit and downhill between the tackles this week. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure what they're going to do. I'll just be interested to see if they change it up this week or stick with that heavy outside zone style scheme. Also, while again, These offenses, it is interesting how similar they looked on film in some ways after week one. Well, so much of that Kentucky offense, so much of their passing yardage was on some deep shots down the field, off the play action game. Well, Missouri had some of those opportunities as well. They were really, really close at times, just didn't quite hit them. A couple balls to Dominic Lovett in particular. One ball to Boo Smith that I thought Connor Basilak definitely threw a poor ball on. But for the most part, he was either right there, putting in a safe spot that was either, you know, an inch or two off. Maybe the receiver could have helped him out by getting two hands on the ball in a couple instances. But, you know, the bottom line is, I think you you could talk yourself into a Missouri victory here. You could talk yourself into Kentucky. Also, if they establish the running game early, and by establish, I don't mean just handing it off a bunch. Sometimes that's what people think establish the run game means. When I say establish the run game, 
I mean, they're running the ball effectively for five, six, seven yards a clip early in the game with Chris Rodriguez. If they're able to do that, it's going to be awfully difficult for Missouri to defend those play action, those play action fakes effectively. But obviously, if they can get Again, it's almost the same story on both sides of the football. If we get into third and tens, we're going to be in trouble offensively. If we get Kentucky into third and tens, well, we're probably going to win the game more than likely. The other, to me, that's the biggest difference. In the ball game, will be decided up front. Whoever wins the game up front will probably win. That's just all there is to it because schematically there's not a lot of huge differences in this team. And and talent-wise, I think we're fairly equal as well. Just between, you know, obviously I think Kentucky has a better offensive line, a better defensive line on paper. They have more experienced receivers. But frankly, at this point, I'll take our quarterback. I'll probably take our defensive backs. Again, I'll ta- I'll definitely take Missouri special teams over Kentucky special teams. I think Missouri might have one of the best special teams units in the country right now. So a fairly even game on paper. Hopefully Missouri isn't sloppy. Hopefully they play a clean football game like they did in week one. And hopefully Kentucky, with only being the second week with a new offensive coordinator, hopefully they still have some kinks to work out in the passing game, the running game, all that good stuff. Throw us some muff punts. Throw us some turnovers. We will certainly take it. And you know what? I'll be back with all of you tomorrow right here on Locked on Mizzou. I'll have my official prediction for the game and also, well, the reaction to the uniforms in a segment I like to call Project Run Play. And, of course, check out my friends over at Locked on Bets. Your boy Q, Lee Sterling, a daily five-day-a-week show about the betting market. Tough to beat, man. Perfect format for betting in this network. Again, Locked On Bets on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts for free. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.